Thursday, February 18th, 10.24 a.m. I'm going to read Chapter 11 of Part 2 of Library Eba, The Crown. The crown of the magician represents the attainment of his work. It is a band of pure gold, on the front of which stand three pentagrams and on the back a hexagram. The central pentagram contains a diamond or a great opal. The other three symbols contain the tau. Around this crown is twined the golden Urius serpent with a wrecked head and expanded hood. Under the crown is a crimson cap of maintenance, which falls to the shoulders. Instead of this, the Atef crown of Thoth is sometimes worn, for Thoth is the god of truth, of wisdom, and the teacher of magic. The Atef crown has two ram's horns, showing energy, dominion, the force that breaks down obstacles, the sign of spring. Between these horns is the disk of the sun. From this springs the lotus upheld by the twin plumes of truth, and three other sun disks are upheld, one by the cup of the lotus, the others beneath the curving feathers. There is still another crown, the crown of Amun, the concealed one, from whom the Hebrews borrowed their holy word Amen. This crown consists simply of the plumes of truth, but into the symbolism of these it is not necessary to go, for all this and more is in the crown first described. The crimson cap implies concealment, and is also symbolical of the flood of glory that pours upon the magician from above. It is of velvet for the softness of that divine kiss, and crimson for that is the very blood of God which is its life. The band of gold is the eternal circle of perfection. The three pentagrams symbolize the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, while the hexagram represents the magician himself. Ordinarily, pentagrams represent microcosm, hexagrams the macrocosm, but here the reverse is the case, because in the crown of perfection, that which is below has become that which is above, and that which is above has become that which is below. If a diamond be worn, it is for the light which is before all manifestations in form. If an opal, it is to commemorate that sublime plan of all, to fold and unfold in eternal rapture, to manifest as the many, that the many may become the one unmanifest. But this matter is too great for an elementary treatise on magic. The serpent which is coiled about the crown means many things, or rather one thing in many ways. It is the symbol of royalty and of initiation, for the magician is anointed king and priest. It also represents Hadith, of which one can here only quote these words, I am the secret serpent coiled about to spring. In my coiling there is joy. If I lift up my head, I and my nuit are one. If I droop down my head and shoot forth venom, then is rapture of the earth, and I and the earth are one. The serpent is also the kundalini serpent, the magical force itself, the manifesting side of the godhead of the magician, whose unmanifest side is peace and silence, of which there is no symbol. In the Hindu system, the great work is represented by saying that this serpent, which is normally coiled at the base of the spine, rises with her hood over the head of the yogin, there to unite with the Lord of all. The serpent is also he who poisons. It is that force which destroys the manifested universe. This is also the emerald snake which encircles the universe. See Atu 21, the universe. This matter must be studied in Liber 65, where this is discussed incomparably. In the hood of this serpent are the six jewels, three on each side, ruby, emerald, and sapphire, the three holy elements made perfect, on both sides in equilibrium.